Corporate Finance Excel Practice Problem. In this presentation, we will work a practice problem in Excel related to the calculation of retained earnings and earnings per share. Get ready, because it's time to take a stance with corporate finance. Here we are in Excel. Note, we're going to have two tabs on our worksheet here. If you're working along with an Excel worksheet, you're going to have possibly four tabs. One with the answer to it, or two with the answers to it, and two with pre-formatted worksheets that will look like this. Practice one and practice two that you can use to work along with us here. Information is on the left-hand side. We're going to put that into the blue area into our worksheet on the right-hand side. Calculations we will be doing. We want to calculate the earnings per share for the first year and uh, the price, uh, the price to earnings ratio, otherwise known as the P/E ratio. We'll do the same thing for the second year so we can compare year over year and we'll be able to compare the earnings per share calculation compared to the price to the earnings ratio. Then we'll take a look at the stock price increase and we'll take a look at the stock price percentage increase and the earnings per share increase and analyze those items. Uh, so these are just some common calculations and we want to be able to differentiate between them. So we got the information to the left which is 2000 X one earnings after taxes. That would be on the income statement, bottom line, basically net income on the income statement, 2000 X one outstanding shares, uh, 202,000. Those are the shares that are outstanding representing ownership in the, the company 2000 X one stock price, 31.5, $31 and 50 cents. This is nowhere on the financial statements. And that's the key point we want to keep in mind here. When we start thinking about stock price, this is this is a number that's coming from the market the market value in the company you would think that the valuation of the market would be somewhat tied to the financial statements however the valuation that's driven by the market forces is not something that's coming from directly the financial statements right people are making their decisions based on the financial statements deriving the stock price the stock price then being if it's a publicly traded company or, or even if not it's on it's a market-based uh, item that you would be thinking about here so uh, it, it's important to understand that right the things that are coming from the financial statements and the things that are coming or the things that are coming from the market stock price is coming from the market not on the financials all right so then we're going to take the earnings after taxes basically net income for 2000 x1 that's going to be our 371,000. we're going to take the number of shares outstanding the number of shares outstanding the 202 in this case and this is going to be giving us our earnings per share. We're going to do our division problem to pick up the earnings per share, which will be equal to the 371,000 divided by the 202 or the 2. We will then, then look at our decimals, practice increase in the decimals, home tab, numbers, increase in it, uh, two spaces to the 1.84. Again, note that you could keep on increasing. It's not often going to be a, uh, a number that's going to round perfectly, but we will then carry it out in this case to 1.484 there uh, be used to get used to you know learning excel and how they deal with formatting different uh, different formats including adding decimal percentages and whatnot there so i'm going to go to the home tab font put an underline under this one then we want to look at the price to the earnings ratio price earnings ratio so i'm going to be picking up the stock price which was the 31.50 and we have the earnings per share which was the 184 so the stock price 3150 the earnings per share is the uh 184 so we're going to divide that out this is going to be equal to the 3150 divided by the 1.84 once again home tab uh numbers group if you add the decimals uh, you, you can see that it won't round perfectly, but we want to bring it up to two places. So this is going to give us our price to earnings ratio or the PE ratio. So if we think about this, note that up top, what we had here for the earnings per share, this is something we can calculate from the information on the financials. This was basically the net income earnings after taxes minus the number of shares outstanding. Those are all things that are basically within the financial statements that would give us 1.84 earnings per share. Not necessarily what the dividends would be, but that would be a calculation of kind of the earnings that we, we could allocate per share and that the dividends could go out for that, but typically they will be not going out for that. It'll be under that. But we can use that as a valuation of the company and compare that then to the, the price of the company on the market. 
So we're going to take that number and then say, okay, well, the market price, what they're selling for right now is $31.50. If I was to buy then a stock for $31.50, how long would it take for me to get basically my money back based on the current earnings per share of the 1.84? You can kind of think about that as, as the calculation. Again, you can't think about it exactly because you're not going to get the money back in dividends. But you would think that that 184 would be a value that either you would get some of it in dividends and or that would be an increase in the value of the company, which you would think would increase the, the earnings or the potential value of your stock in some way, shape or form, which means that the value of your stock should go up if the company retains that amount and uses it wisely. So you can say, all right, well, then if the stock price is 3150 and the earnings per share is 1.84, how many earnings per share would it get to before it would, would, would pay for itself, in essence, trying to get it like a payback period or something? You could think of it in, in that terms. That would be 17.85. Uh, so you'd have 17.85 times uh, is the P-E ratio, meaning the earnings per share uh, would have to be over itself, again, 17.15 times to get to the, to the stock price at this point. Okay, so then I'm going to underline this home tab font group. I'm going to underline this and then we'll do the same thing for 2000 X2. So these are going to be common like uh, investment type of thinking calculations. So we got the earnings per share. How much am I getting per share? Compare that then to the stock price. If that earnings per share was consistent, how long would it take for me to basically cover the price of the stock at the 3150? It's 17.15. Let's do the same thing for the next year. Then we're going to say 2000 X2 earnings, basically a net income. This is the bottom line of the tax return. The shares outstanding have not changed. So they're still at the 202. You might think, how can they not change when stock is, is selling all the time? The stock is not typically selling from the issuance of the corporation. They're selling between people. So if you're looking at this stock exchange, it's not unless it's an initial offering from the company then it's the stock that people are buying and selling are not typically new stock from the company but rather people buying and selling their shares that they have that the company had already issued in the past therefore you're not going to have a whole lot of times where the company is issuing new stock all the time right so the stock may very well be consistent uh from year to year we're going to say the stock is going to be the same i'm going to go ahead and underline that home tab font and underline That'll give us the earnings per share calculation. Once again, this would be something that you can calculate from the data internal to the company without depending on outside market forces. Then we're going to go to the home tab numbers. We're going to add the decimals. And it, once again, notice that it's not exactly that number, 2.61, but we're rounding it there in Excel. And we're using that number within the calculation as well. So notice when we came to the 17.15, uh, if we were to do that this way, if I took 31.5 divided by the 1.84 and then I added decimals, I'd get to a different number. Why? Because I multiply this times 8.14 and I multiply this times 8.14 or 8.13766 really because I used that cell to multiply it out, ending up in a, in a small possibly material possibly not difference of the 17.12 because of rounding so just be aware of that rounding uh difference so we'll do that here we're going to say all right now the price to the earnings ratio is going to be uh the 2000 x2 earnings uh, after taxes hold on a sec price to earnings ratio is going to be then the stock price of the 42 and then we're going to pick up the earnings per share, earnings per share. And notice when I do this formula, I'm saying equals that 16 or that 2.16, meaning I'm using the actual number there, not simply just 2.16, but actually 2.163 and so on. And that's going to give us our PE ratio. So the price to earnings ratio then will be, we're going to say, all right, the stock price is 42 divided by 2.16 that means the stock price is 19.41 times the the earnings per share so all right and then if we do our our changes up top we could say okay let's take a look at the year over year information let's take a look at uh, the stock price for 
2000X2, which was 42. And let's compare that to last year, the stock price, which was 3150. That's going to give us a difference, difference of the 42 minus the 3150 or the 1050. And uh, then we could take the, the stock price for 2000X1. And then if we divide this out, we're going to take the difference, the 1050 divided by the beginning price. And I'm going to make that a percentage, the percentage increase. Home tab, numbers, percent. And this is going to be the stock price, I should say like percentage increase. So this is a common calculation and, and you want to get kind of used to this. We'll, we'll be using this in a ratio analysis again. So if I want to, if I want to look at the percentage increase, because maybe I want to compare this to other stocks that have different stock prices, but I want to compare the relative increase in the stock price. I can't just use the numbers. I got to use a percent. So what's the percentage increase? This is a common stat you'll use in baseball and any other kind of stat like performance measures for job performance and this kind of thing. We're going to say, okay, what was the number uh, in the current year minus the last year? That gives us the change. So the difference is 1050, but I want to make a percentage change. So I'm going to divide it by then the prior year. Divided by the prior year, that'll give us the percentage change. I'm going to then, so it went up then, the price went up 33, and let's add some decimals, home tab, font, 33.33%. I'm going to put an underline here. So we could say, if, if you want to say, well, how much did the price go up? Well, it went up $10.50. If you want to compare that to increases in other stocks to see if it's in the ballpark of other stocks that might be selling at, at other rates, you could say, and it went up by 33.33%. How do you calculate the 33.33%? You take the dollar change, divide it by the prior year, and that'll give you the percentage change. Let's do a, th a similar calculation for the earnings per share. So we're going to get the percentage change in the earnings per share. So let's take the earnings per share in the current year or year two is 2.16. And then the earnings per share in the prior year and the prior year was 1.84. The difference between the two, the 2.16 minus the 1.84 is 0.33. This is the difference. We can then put an underline here, home tab font and underline. And then we're going to have uh, compare that to the prior year. The prior year is going to be the 1.84. So this is going to be the earnings per share increase or the percentage increase, which will be the 0.33 divided by the 1.84. Let's make it a percentage, home tab, numbers, percent, add the decimals. There we have it, it's about 17.79%. Let's put an underline here. So now if we look at the earnings per share, we're saying we're saying okay the earnings per share was 2.16 and then in, in 2000 x1 it was 1.84 so we have a, a difference an increase of 33 cents per share we're going to take that difference if we want to compare it to other increases in other earnings per share of other of their stock we can look at the percentage increase by dividing by the prior year to get the percentage increase of the 17.79 so if you, if you look at the comparison, you're going to say, all right, well, the earnings per share then, the value internal to the company based on the internal information in the company went up 17.79%, whereas the stock price went up 33.33%. So the stock price went up high, at a higher rate than the earnings per share. If you were to look at that, you'd say, okay, the market is, looks like the market's taking something other uh, then just the just the earnings per share calculation into consideration to calculate the, the the stock market price, because you know you would think if the, the, these would be somewhat similar, you could see the difference between these changes, and you could start to analyze and start to think about okay, why did the stock market price go up go up that much? It's not it's not being correlated directly to the uh, earnings per share. Is there something else going on, and so on with it? Let's do it again. Similar calculation. We'll do this practice. 
we have the same outline, different numbers. So we'll do this a bit faster. So we're going to take the, the 2000X1 beginning number, uh, the earnings per share. This is what's internal to the company. So we're going to say we can get this from the financial statements. In other words, we got the earnings after taxes, basically the net income, bottom line on the income statement. Then we're going to be taking the shares outstanding, uh, 202,000 shares outstanding. And that's going to be the 202. That's going to give us our earnings per share. So we're going to be picking up then the earnings per share by dividing this out. This will be equal to the 437 divided by the 202. We're going to add some decimals. So I'm going to go to the home tab. Uh, numbers, add two decimals. Again, it's going to be more than that, you know, in terms of not an even number. But we're going to take it out to two decimals. If we use that cell for calculation as we will, we'll be using a number that won't be 2.16, but something or whatever the real number is. So home tab, font, we'll put an underline here. Then we're going to go to the price to earnings ratio. So we're going to get the stock price. Now this is what's outside to the company being determined by the market would be the $43. We're going to compare that to the earnings per share, which is going to be the 2.16. And that's going to be our P E ratio price to earnings ratio which is going to be the $43 divided by the 2.16 about because remember that 2.16 is a rounded uh, it's actually something different we're calculating by the actual number here so in other words well, well I won't go into it. we saw that last time I'm going to go to the home tab font we'll underline here so we have a 19.88 so if, if we're calculating the earnings it's going to take 19.88 times over to get to the earnings to match the stock price. So then if we did that for 2000 uh, X2 or the second year, we're going to say, all right, the earnings after taxes is going to be the 207. The outstanding shares we're going to say are the same. They haven't changed because the corporation hasn't issued any new stock. That doesn't mean stock trades aren't happening, home tab font. That just means that they haven't issued the stock. The trades are happening amongst themselves on the stock market for stocks that have been issued in the past. Then we'll divide uh, this two out. This is gonna be equal to the 207 divided by the 202. Let's add decimals, home tab, numbers, adding decimals, bringing it out to 1.02 and then we'll Calculate the price to earnings or the PE ratio, which is going to give us the stock price or start with the stock price, which now went down to $27.80. And then we're going to get our earnings per share, which is that 1.02. That's going to give us our P. Well, let's do this. We'll get it from up here. The PE ratio, which is going to be equal to the 27.80 divided by the 1.02 or 27 so the PE ratio you can see has gone up here uh, has gone up and the price and the earnings per share has gone down so let's do some comparisons now year over year comparisons for the stock price we can say all right well the stock price for uh, the current year is only 2780 if I was to buy a share of stock and last time last year it was $43, which means it went down, subtracting these two by 1520, and that's gonna be the difference in the stock price. I'll put an underline on this $43, home tab font underline. So we got a difference, it went, the stock price went down. Is that consistent with other stocks? Well, I can't really do that by just the stock price, I need the percentage decrease to really do that. So I'm gonna divide that by the prior period which is the 43 and that's going to give us the percentage decrease. So I'm going to say stock price percentage. I really should decrease. And that's going to be equal to the 1520 divided by the uh, 43. I'm going to make that a percent and add decimals, home tab, font, percent, add decimals. And then I'm going to put an underline up top, home tab, uh, home tab, the font and underline. So we could say, okay, well, that's a pretty significant decrease in the price. What's the percentage decrease? 
0.35% decrease in the price. Then we can then compare that decrease and say, is that is that standard in the sector and the market, whatnot, a 35.35 decrease in the price? Then we can do the same for the earnings per share. So I'm going to say earnings per share 20x2 uh, was the uh, earnings per share was the 1.02 and then the earnings per share 20x3 I'm sorry 2.x 20x1 was the 2.16 so the difference is going to be equal to the 1.02 minus the 2.16 so we've got the uh 1.14 it looks like it's already formatted for you which you'd go to the home tab numbers and add decimals if you need to i'm going to go to this item i'm going to go to home tab font underline and then we're going to compare that to uh, 2000x1 and that's going to be the 2.16 to see the earnings per share percent percentage uh, decrease which is going to be equal to the 1.14 divided by the 2.16 I can put an underline here home tab font group underline we can make this a percentage home tab numbers percent add decimals so we got the 52.63 uh, so once again if you look at this increase you're saying okay earnings per share uh, went down the earnings per share went went down by 1.14 dollars but if i want to compare that to the to the earnings per share decrease on other stocks in the market then i would want to use the percentage decrease which means i'm going to divide it by the prior year to get the stat and it says this went down by 52.63 so if you if you look at this you're going to say all right and if i compare these two out i'm going to say well the stock price went down maybe everything went down in other stocks and whatnot but let's let's compare it to the earnings per share the earnings per share decreased by 52 percent earnings per share whereas the stock price went down a lot but it only went down by the 35 35 uh, percent per share decrease so and, and notice how you can compare these you can kind of look at these percentages and give you some some kind of comparison between these numbers whereas if you just look at the difference the dollar change difference it's not as easy to see you know the change what's happening uh, you know year over year as you as you go through this so it's just one factor that you could uh consider when you know analyzing some, one of a major kind of calculation you can consider and that you can use similar kind of statistics and this kind of percentage increase and decrease very common to measure many different things